السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا My journey from here starts between the moon and the stars. Tis that I cry on my cheeks. Crying for your dome, it seeks My master, come see these tears Come and save me from my fears Karbala, Karbala Allahumma rizukna Karbala, Karbala Allahumma rizukna Karbala I hear Zainab crying out Zawar, I am alone. No Abbas and no Hussein. Visitors, you ease my pain. March on towards Karbala. I'll also visit from Sham. Karbala. This mother cries In Karbala my son lies O oh, lovers, I am Zahra I'll also come from afar My tears will flow from Baqi To Furat, oh, can't you see? Karbala, Karbala Allahumma rizukna And for Ashura, he was the prayer of Zahra. My name is Ummul Banin. My love, no limit has seen. Karbala, Karbala. Tears of blood from above the rain Crying for Mawla Hussein Tears of blood from above the rain Crying for Mawla Hussein From upon the twelfth one's cheek To avenge Asghar he seeks my Imam, for you we weep, ironing for you runs deep. Karbala, Karbala, Allahumma rizukna. Karbala, Karbala, Allahumma rizukna. Karbala. Love and tears are my fuel, marching with them towards you. But a drop in the million sea Oh Hussein, acknowledge me I've walked on Karbala's floor To throw myself at your door I long for Bain al My heart is with Abbas and
The whole year we practice understanding Imam Hussein, but the main message was never that. It was to sort of spread that message to the world. Because New York is that melting pot and it has that tolerance level, you can actually convey the message and the person would be like, yeah, it sounds pretty interesting. Where else can I kind of learn more about it? That is the reason I want to pick up the alum so people can see his importance, his bravery. Join me, Minhal al Khafaj, for this special live series, this Muharram, on Imam Hussein TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV we are here in Karbala to give you another update the latest update that we have we are here at the top floor studio here in Karbala you can see that there's been a bit of a change here there's four AC units that cover the entire building there's a stage here for us inshallah this will all be built with your donations and inshallah you will find it in your heart to help build this place for you for your children for your grandchildren and everyone to hear the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam these AC units have cost us a hundred and thirty thousand dollars we need this money to be able to accommodate for everyone for the shows for the guests that we have here in Karbala you can see that from this studio we overlook the beautiful shrines of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, the Mukhayyam, and right there, the construction that's happening at Tel al-Zainabiyya that will be there where Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam stood and saw the calamities of Karbala. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, if we just go behind me here, you can see that 
there's still a lot of work to be done. The flooring needs to be covered with tiles. Now, the walls need to be done and a lot of stuff in the background that hasn't been decorated or painted. It's literally just bricks. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the latest update that we have on this studio. And inshallah, we will receive your donations to help complete this building for you, for your children, and for your grandchildren. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدي ومولاي علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أما بعد أبو بكر refused to give her any of the property so Fatima became angry with Abu Bakr kept away from him and did not talk to him until she died she remained alive for six months after the death of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. When she passed away, she was buried by Imam Ali alayhi salam, and he did not inform Abu Bakr of the burial. I wouldn't blame you if you thought that this was a passage from a Shi'i text, from a Shi'i author from a Shi'i piece of literature. Indeed, it's a passage from Sahih al-Bukhari of all texts. You find that this passage is found in one of the most famous non-Shi'i texts in Islamic history. If ever there was a problem, a difficulty, a nemesis for Abu Bakr, after Saqifah, it was Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Indeed, who would have thought that a female would be his major problem? There were enough personalities who were around in Medina at the time who had already objected to what took place at Saqifah. Their objection could be seen in the fact that they were not ready to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. Many assume that everybody had pledged allegiance to him and that everything had moved smoothly. This couldn't be further from the truth. There were already a number of personalities who we discussed last night who clearly were not ready to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr for one reason or another. Either there were those who were busy with the burial of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, or there were those who blatantly had disagreed with either his appointment, the method of his appointment, 
or him taking this leadership. You therefore found that the most outspoken of them, in many cases, were the males of Medinian society. But if ever there was one who was more outspoken than all the males put together against Abu Bakr and Umar and what happened at Saqifa, it was Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, as we know, in the Muslim world today, is the most revered lady, one may argue. If you go to Shia and non-Shia, they'll all say to you how much they love Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. As in, wherever you travel in the Muslim world, You'll see people who admire Fatima al-Zahra, people who name their children after Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. But in the cases of many out there, they do not know about the differences and the war of words between Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and Abu Bakr. If they did, then they have to ask themselves a major question. If Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam does not agree with that particular government and believed that there was power that was usurped, then what does it say about the government of that time? If you claim to love Fatima, your love for Fatima cannot be simply based on the fact that she's the daughter of the Prophet. Here we have a lady who, when we examine what took place after Saqifa, is the most vehemently outspoken of all personalities in that society. Nobody spoke out against Abu Bakr and Umar, and nobody proved to be a thorn in the lives of Abu Bakr and Umar at the beginning of their authority, like Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Yet if you were to ask many Muslims, do you understand this? Do you believe in this? You'll find that there are many out there who don't even know about this. When you see the tradition that I quoted, the tradition from Sahih al-Bukhari is a tradition which in reality is self-explanatory. As in if Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam says that she is angry with somebody. Her anger is an anger which is the anger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. As in the Holy Prophet himself would say on numerous occasions, Fatima bad'atun minni. Man aadaha faqad aadhani. Fatima is a part of me. Whoever angers her, whoever hurts her, has hurt me. Hurting her, hurting the Prophet, is hurting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, if Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam left this world angry with somebody, what does that tell you about that person? Because every year you ask me as a Shi'i that why is it that I do not revere Abu Bakr or I do not revere Umar or I do not revere Uthman? Why? It's because I see that there is a clear instance in my history where the holiest household in this religion are clearly angry with personalities because of their behaviors. When I see that, how can I love the one angered and the one they're angry with? Logically speaking, I see two people, one who's angered, another who's angry with somebody, who's the cause of anger. How can I love both of them? As in, do I believe in a Jannah? And in this heaven, I believe that the one who has died angry with somebody are going to end up in the same heaven as one another. As in surely when the Quran keeps telling us, why do you not reflect? Why do you not ponder? Further than that, how does she die so young? As in this is a lady who's still, according to some narrations, in her teens, in her late teens. How does she die so young? When you look at what's taken place in the last few lectures that we've delivered in Muharram, we're not talking more than 10 days of history. Many might assume that when I've discussed the pen and paper, and I've discussed Os Os Osama's army, and yesterday when we discussed Saqifa, and today when we discuss Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, you might assume that this is over three months, seven months, nine months. You might assume that this might be over 10 years, 20 years. I'm literally discussing 10 days worth of history. In literally 10 days, we have personalities who have not only attacked the Prophet emotionally with their words, after the prophets died, they've gone ahead and formed their own election. After that, they begin to take out their venom on the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Let us tonight examine how taking out your venom on Fatima means there's no issue one day in taking out your venom on the sons of Fatima. And I'd like to do this in the following stages. Number one, when Saqifa took place, which house did the dissenters gather in? 
the ones who were against what took place at Saqifah. Number two, if they gathered and they dissented in this house, does that mean that they are now fasiqeen? Are they kuffar? Are they out of the fold of the religion of Islam? Number three, what do non-Shi'i texts show about the reaction of Umar when he heard there were a group of people gathering in the house of Fatima? What was his opinion? Number four, did that group have to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr? If you didn't have to pledge allegiance to the Prophet of Islam when he said he was a prophet, why should you be forced to pledge to a Khalifa? Number five, when Fatima Zahra realized what the plan was, what did they do to the piece of land given to her by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Number six, in Sahih al-Bukhari, what is the whole hadith? In the chapter of the Maghazi, in the chapter discussion, discussing Khaybar and the aftermath of Khaybar, what does the hadith say exactly? And when we break down the hadith, how does the hadith highlight not only Fatima dying angry, but not only nobody knowing where her grave is, not only that she died in the middle of the night, but also Imam Ali's clear disapproval of Umar ibn al-Khattab's behavior in the lead up to the death of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. After that, when Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam was buried, what was the reaction of Imam Amir al mumini alayhi salam to the stand of his wife Fatima? And in the Muslim community, did that result in them showing respect to Imam Ali when Fatima died? Or did they distance themselves even more from Imam Ali? And to conclude, when we look at Islamic history, what were the reactions to Fatima al-Zahra in Islam in the Umayyad period? Who were the ones who loved her? Who were the ones who cursed her? And on the 10th of Muharram, does she deserve a mention? Of course she does. But who exactly mentioned her? Let's examine this and dissect the topic in depth. Saqifah's taken place. When Saqifah's taking place, naturally we could not say 100% of the people agreed with what took place at Saqifah. Because already we said amongst the Ansar, Sa'ad bin Ubadah and his son Qais said we will never pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. We said that Imam Ali alayhi salam was burying the Prophet and was finishing everything that was taking place. Imam Ali alayhi salam wasn't the only one who was doing this, nor was he the only one who had heard about what had happened at Saqifah and was unhappy with it. Who were the others? Amongst the others was, for example, as Zubair, cousin of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He was amongst those who had blatantly spoken out against what was taking place. Amongst them was Salman al-Muhammadi, who many call Salman al-Farsi. Amongst them was al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad. Amongst them, for example, was the likes of Hudayfa al-Yaman. Amongst them, you find, for example, some mention the names of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Others, some mention Bilal as being amongst those who had an issue with what was taking place. Because there's always an interesting question why Bilal, Mu'addin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, suddenly stops reciting Adhan after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi dies. Why have you stopped? And why are you dying in Syria far away from the Islamic land? The reality is that all of these realized what had taken place. That in the space of one week, Umar ibn al-Khattab not only had raised his voice against the Prophet, not only had Abu Bakr blatantly not joined Osama's army, not only had the two of them gone to Saqifah, but now they were walking around and ordering for people to pledge allegiance. Why are you forcing people to pledge allegiance? My prophet, when he came to Mecca, did he put a sword on people's heads and say, you must believe in me as a prophet? I ask all of you, the prophet of Allah, Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Did he go to people when he became a prophet and said, if you don't believe in me as a prophet, I'm going to behead you. Do we have any evidence of that? If you were Christian or you were Jewish and you didn't believe in the religion of Islam, which ayah do all of us use from Surah Al-Baqarah to prove that I cannot compel you to be a Muslim? Which ayah? La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in religion. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفَرْ Whoever wants to believe, they can believe. Who wants to disbelieve, they can disbelieve. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا عَبُدُوا وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ 
ولا أنا عابد وما عابد ولا أنتم عابد وما عابد لكم دينكم ولي دين to use your religion to his mind the prophet may be a bashir he may be a nadir he may be a mundir a warner a reminder one thing he's not musaytar cannot compel a person wants to join my religion they can join and if they don't want to join they don't have to join what I have never understood in Islamic history is how is it that with nubuwa you cannot force someone to pledge to Rasulullah but suddenly with Saqifa you're going around forcing people to pledge what Islam is that if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when he announced his prophethood went round to every house and be like if you guys don't come towards us and accept us I'm gonna burn your house down I'll be like you know what I don't want to follow this guy this guy's crazy this is lunatic this is blatant ignorance would you agree as in any non-muslim out there if you told him the prophet muhammad peace be upon his family if you never agreed with him he used to pick up a sword and he comes to your house and beheads you he'll be like you guys prophets mad and so what's he doing either i can agree to follow him or i agree to disagree the reality is that a non-muslim will look at this and say this is ridiculous after saqifa happened do you know what began to take place they had a problem how do we get ali to pledge why is ali a problem a because he's the closest to muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. nobody is as close to rasulullah as ali ibn abi talib b ghadir there's too much of a wording there to indicate that he's bigger than everybody else c he's not present so what did they want they wanted him to pledge hold on a minute if you people are already in power why are you so adamant that imam ali has to pledge to you you know what's your problem Say Imam Ali, for example, said, no, I don't want to pledge to you. Why do you have to force a pledge? We know in Islam, a bay'ah, which is coerced, is not a bay'ah that can be accepted. A bay'ah has to come from the heart. It cannot come from, if I now get somebody to come to the Khalifa, and I'm like, give bay'ah, and I've pointed an AK on his head. That person, even if he gives bay'ah, at the end of the day of judgment, will say they forced me into giving a bay'ah. But what happened was, if you read literature, you'll find these companions, where did they gather? The house of Fatima and Ali. All of them were gathering in that house. Your Amir al muminin your Zubairs, your Salmans, they were gathering in that house. What is that house, by the way? Who's in that house? In that house, there's a young boy. He's eight years old. He's called Imam al-Hassan, alayhi salam. And in that house... There's a young boy called Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, seven years of age. And in that house, there's a young girl by the name of Zainab alayhi salam, five years of age. And there is another young girl who possibly might be called Zainab as well, but a smaller Zainab. We may call her, for example, Um Kulthum alayhi salam. And there is a lady by the name of Fatima. Daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, who's pregnant as well at that time. So this, we will call it in our language, a young family. Do you agree? Yeah, because Imam Ali alayhi salam is in his 30s. Fatima al-Zahra is in her late teens. And they have kids. Again, go to the non-Muslim out there. Say to a non-Muslim, if there's a house where there are children there, even the non-Muslim will say, listen, if I've got a problem with the elders of the house, put the kids aside. Don't touch any of the kids. It's a non-Muslim who would say this. When all of these were gathering in the house, they were telling Imam Ali alayhi salam, Mawla, what do we do? As in, look what they've done. They've gone to Saqifa and they've had this skirmish in Saqifa. They've had this election take place. When they were gathering in this house, discussing with Imam Ali alayhi salam, there are two texts I want you all to read at home. And they're not Shi'i texts. One of them is the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. And the other is Tariq Abu Al-Fida. These two texts are available in Arabic. I don't know if they're available in English, but they're certainly available in Arabic. If you look at them, there's something which is interesting, which occurs in both these texts. What is it? Umar's threat to burn the house of Fatima. In both these texts, Umar ibn al-Khattab, because of what? Not because of Fatima al-Zahra. But Umar ibn al-Khattab has a problem that why are these people not pledging allegiance to Abu Bakr? Why do they have to? 
If Abu Bakr is chosen by Allah and they don't pledge allegiance, even then you shouldn't attack them because the man greater than all of them, chosen by Allah as his final prophet, if you never pledge allegiance to him, you were not attacked. Did anyone ever go to the house of the Munafiqun and say that there's a family in the house, I'm going to burn the house down? When Rasulullah was alive, ever do you find, because we find ayahs in the Quran that says, If you, O Prophet of God, were hard hearted or you were severe, people would have run away from you. Umar ibn al Khattab, in the first of these texts, the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, there's this narration from Ubaidullah ibn Umar, from Zayd ibn Aslam, from his father Aslam. What is the narration? The narration tells us how Umar ibn al-Khattab has a discussion with Fatima al-Zahra while these are all in the house. He says, we respect you. Nobody's more beloved to the Prophet, to us than you. But if these people think that they can gather in this house and dissent against the government, we will burn the house down. Who's in the house? So when you say, I'm going to burn a house down, who's in the house? If you want to look at Sunni political theory, some of the people in that house are going Jannah. They promised Jannah. So I'm going to burn a house of people who are going to heaven. Me and them are going to coach. We're going to link. We're going to relax in heaven. It's absolutely crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Of course, we could look later on. People started to write names of hadiths. People, they're all going Jannah. But at that moment, if you think logically, if Umar ibn al-Khattab, burns the house of Fatima. And remember, this is not a Shi'i book, just in case someone says, ah, this is your Shi'a literature. Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, it says that he says to her, listen, we respect you, Fatima. I'll make it clear to you. They continue to gather in this house. Why? Because they are descending against the Islamic government. And if you descend against the Islamic government, then you're going to have to be burnt. If that's Islam, then Assalam al al-Islam. Peace be upon Islam. If that's Islam, even I wouldn't want to be part of that Islam. He says this, therefore the threat has already begun that I'm ready, Umar ibn al-Khattab, I am ready to burn a house, which the Prophet used to say, Assalamu alaikum ya ahla bayt al-nubuwa, outside that house, uh, where the Prophet used to recite, Inna ma yuridu Allahu liyudhub ankum al-ritsa ahla al-bayti, wa yutahhirakum tathheera, he used to recite outside of that house, Umar ibn al-Khattab is now ready according to the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba. And in Tariq Abu al-Fida, you found the discussion there as well, where Fatima tells him, but you know what this house is. He says, well, if we're going to have to burn it, it's going to have to be burnt. When this therefore takes place, we see clearly that the government that's being established is a government that is ready to get rid of any of its enemies, including the very flesh of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. When someone tells me, why did Karbala happen? I say, hold on. If you're willing to burn Fatima, what are the tents of Zainab? If you're willing to burn the house of Fatima, what are the tents of Zainab? I've already burnt before and those were meant to be more religious than me. So what's the problem if I do this? If those more religious than me were ready to do it? He already knew that if Ali and Zubair and the rest of them think, and that's why you'll find medieval scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah, when they say that there is, if, if an attack happened on the door of Fatima, then it's justified because you're breaking the fitna of the dissenters against the government. Yeah, hold on, who's behind the door? If an attack happens, who's behind the door? You say to me that there's four ladies of paradise. This is their hadith. They say four ladies of paradise. Fatima and Khadija and Maryam and Asiya. You say to me, Fatima is a part of me. Whoever angers her angers me. You have now reached a level. And that's why every listener out there, I don't care if you're Shi'i, Sunni, Sufi, Salafi, whatever you are. You admit that there's a problem. There's a war of words between Fatima and Zahra, Abu Bakr and Umar. You have to decide for yourself what your position is before you get to your grave. Because you're going to have to face your Lord and your Prophet one day, either saying, I loved the one who was angered, or I loved the cause of the anger. Someone says, yes, but these texts, how do they prove? What do they prove? 
they proved to us that Umar ibn al-Khattab felt that it doesn't matter what needs to be done, even if the house where revelation used to take place, because we know Jibra'il came in that house. How then, innama yurid, where was the house where the verse of purification took place? Jibra'il came to that house, Umar did not mind, even if I have to burn the house, not kill you, Fatima, burn the house. Well, if you're going to burn the house, that means anyone who's in that house, even the two masters of paradise, even there, they can get burnt as well. When they did that, they kept on saying, Ali must pledge, Ali must pledge. Baba, if you've become Khalifa, why does Ali have to pledge to you? Why? Unless you're chosen by Allah, even if you're chosen by Allah, why should he pledge to you? Get on with your Khilafah, unless you know that, you know what, we need to get past this hurdle. One way or the other. That's why if you look at Nawawi or Ibn Hajar, they always are trying to justify Fatima versus Abu Bakr. Omar versus Fatima. They're trying to find a way to reconcile. Why? Because of that one hadith in Bukhari. That hadith in Bukhari highlighted that when they wanted to finish Imam Ali and Fatima al-Zahra, knowing how outspoken they were against Saqifah, what was the way to do it? Confiscate their property. Confiscate which property? Confiscate the property known as Fedak. Why confiscate Fedak? For what reason did they want to confiscate Fedak? On the one hand, economically speaking, you virtually kill any opportunity for them to rise economically. The date palms of Fedak, Fedak, which is about 160 km from Medina, the date palms of Fedak are in similitude to the date palms of Kufa. People used to swear by the date palms of Iraq. Isn't that true? Until today, the land of Iraq has the most beautiful palm trees on earth. And the Arabs used to swear by their palm trees. And, and that land of Fedak, that was a piece of land that belonged to the Jews of Fedak. When Imam Ali السلام, achieved victory in the battle of Khaybar by defeating Marhab and his soldiers, when you achieve victory in war, in Islamic law, the booty can either be achieved through warfare or no warfare. Just Either I've achieved victory by riding horses and I've fought with swords, I bought shields, I bought my camels. If I achieve victory through warfare, then there is a certain amount of khums distribution that has to take place. Quran says in Surah 8 verse 41, وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ etc. etc. One-fifth of what I acquire has to be given towards God, the Prophet, and then the rest could be shared amongst the soldiers. That's if I fought in a battle. When Imam Ali defeated the Jews of Khaybar, the Jews of Fedak were their neighbors. The Jews of Fedak said, listen, we ain't gonna get involved with Abu Turab, nor his sword. You can have our land. The Prophet said, half of the land will still be yours and half will come to us. If a piece of land in Islam has been acquired without war, it doesn't fall under the category of khums, it falls under the category of fate. Okay? Fate is that piece of land which is acquired without any horses, fighting, cavalry. And the word derivative of fate can be found in the Quran. وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ مِنْهُمْ فَمَا أَوْجَفْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَيْلٍ وَلَا رِكَابٍ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يُصَلَّتُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءَ you found here that this ayah mentions very clearly what? That that which you acquire without fighting, without horses, without cavalry, falls under the category of fay in Islamic economics. Fay, unlike khums, can be distributed as the Prophet wants to. With khums, there is a fifth towards a certain criteria of people. With fay, if Rasulullah acquires that piece of land, then the Holy Prophet can distribute it as he likes. Khaybar took place four years before he died. Remember this point. Fedak is not inheritance. They made it a case of inheritance. Fedak, we have a qa'ada called qa'ada al-yad. Possession indicates ownership. If now I'm living in my house, okay, and you claim that it's yours, is it me who has to bring witnesses or you have to bring witnesses? I'm living in the house. You say it's yours. Who has to bring the witnesses, me or you? Possession indicates ownership. Unless you go and bring yours. Fatima al-Zahra, that property 
How did it come to her? The Prophet, because he acquired that property. What did the Prophet say? The Quran revealed the ayah according to Shia narrators. Give your near ones their haqq. He said in honor of Khadija and what she gave to Islam from her wealth, I'm going to give it to Fatima al-Zahra this piece of land. Because her mother gave so much wealth to the religion, the least we could do is give this to her. When it was given to her, it was given to her when? Seventh year after Hijrah. The Prophet and what we're talking about right now is four years later. Therefore, Fedek on the first level for us is not inheritance. Fedek is that which already belongs to Fatima. It belongs to her. All of a sudden, as soon as Saqifa happens, Fedek confiscated. Who oh, a Fedek being confiscated is not a surprise. If I've got a man who wants to burn a house, what's a piece of land? As soon, and what I'm going to narrate to you right now is purely Bukhari. I won't go anywhere else. I'll narrate. Not because Sahih al Bukhari is a hujja on me, it's not. But for the non-Shia out there who are like you guys just make up issues between Abu Bakr and Fatima. They all loved each other. No, I'm reading Sahih al-Bukhari. Kitab al-Maghazi, the chapter of the expeditions or the wars. On the section of Khaybar, I read that Fatima al-Zahra sent for someone to ensure that her fate was given to her. And that when that person was sent to Abu Bakr, this is exactly what's written in Sahih al-Bukhari. You can all go and search it online. Shia and non-Shia, go and search it online and let your conscience speak to you. She sent somebody to make sure that that which is hers, the fate of Fedak, is with her. Abu Bakr had confiscated it. Abu Bakr said, the Prophet says that our property is not inherited. The Prophet, peace be upon him, his family says, our property is not inherited. Rather, what we leave behind is sadaqah. And that is at the disposal of our family. So Abu Bakr refused to give fedak to Fatima. You're the sole narrator of this hadith, which works wonderfully for him. The Prophet, they say that the Prophet does what? The property is not inherited. I ask all of you a question. Very basic question. Everybody listening to me, wherever you are. In Islam, a lady can inherit or no? You all agree? And you all have cases where your marhumin pass away and there's a sister in the family and that is distributed. Why would there be a law for the Prophet and a law for everybody else on this issue? Why his daughter no and my daughter yes? Does it make any sense that everybody's son or daughter inherits except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Does that make any sense? Why not? No, because prophets, we do not leave behind property as inheritance. You know what? You leave, just leave your family just to rot on the earth. You don't leave anything behind of that which you acquired. That's what Islam became. He said that the prophets... Do not leave behind property as inheritance. Okay? Rather, what we leave behind is sadaqah, and that may be at disposal of high. So Abu Bakr refused to give fedak. Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam, her reaction is fundamental. Why? In one reaction, she will highlight whether she believes the government of the time is legitimate or illegitimate. Do we agree? Fatima al Zahra became angry with Abu Bakr. That's all we need to know. Even if I finished my majlis here, that's enough. Because on the day of judgment, her father is going to have to meet him and meet her. And she's going to say, I died angry with him. Fatima al Zahra became angry with Abu Bakr, kept away from him, and did not talk to him until she died. When she became angry with him, if we just sidestep from Bukhari for a moment, when she became angry with him, was it just a tantrum? There's a lady, emotional. You know, some people will say these things. Orientalists say Fatima is always in a bad mood and emotional and so on. When she became angry with him, you're saying that prophets don't leave behind inheritance. Let's look at the Quran because Fatima is the walking Quran. Because Abu Bakr versus Fatima 
If you were to look at it from the Sunni angle, it's non-ma'soom versus non-ma'soom. For us, it's non-ma'soom versus ma'soomah. You agree? And Sunni angle, even if there's a war of words between them, they're both not ma'soom. You have arguments. For us, no. There's a difference between when a fallible speaks against an infallible. A lady who was in the ayah of kisa in namayuridu. That for us is enough. She has been purified where no impurities come near her. She looked at him and she said to him, that you say that prophets don't leave behind inheritance? How about the ayah in the Quran? وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ Dawood. Sulaiman inherited from Dawood. I thought prophets don't leave anything behind. How about the ayah about Yahya and Zakaria? هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِي Yaqub, Yahya, Nabi Zakaria. Sorry, in the story, even you find others in the Quran where they're saying, Provide for me an heir, someone who inherits from me, inherits from the family of Jacob. Then she says another ayah. Look at Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. What's she showing us? Don't respect me just as a daughter who you imagine is like this young girl. I'm a Quran walking on earth, and my husband is greater than me. She said, have you not read the ayah in the Quran? كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرًا لِلْوَصِيَّةُ لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Have you not read the ayah of Abu Bakr in Surah 2 verse 180? The Quran is the power of Islam. If the Muslims have memorized it, they're powerful. If the Muslims neglect it, know that they're miles away. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ It has been prescribed upon you that when death approaches you, if there is a certain amount of property or wealth left, you write a wasiyah to your near ones. Am I not the near one of Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Am I not the nearest one? All these ayahs of the Quran, so Sulaiman can inherit David. Yahya can inherit Zakaria. The Quran told the whole of the Muslim world that they can inherit from their fathers. Or have you taken us back to Jahiliyyah? Because in Jahiliyyah, the ladies could not inherit. They were being inherited. Are we going back to Jahiliyyah now? Bukhari's hadith. What does it say? Fatima was angry with Abu Bakr. Clear in the hadith. She refused. And then she stayed away. And then after that, what happened? And then after that, the narration mentions she did not talk to him until... She died. Bukhari continues, interestingly. Who narrates this hadith? Aisha. Narration continues, interestingly. She remained alive for six months after the Prophet died. This is in Bukhari. When she died, her husband, Imam Ali, السلام, this is in Bukhari, buried her alone. And did not inform Abu Bakr of the funeral. How many things can you pick out just from those two lines in Bukhari? How many things? Firstly, that this lady, the daughter of the Prophet, dies months after her father. Secondly, that Imam Ali السلام, does not want to inform Abu Bakr of what's taken place. If Imam Ali felt Abu Bakr is this pious, spiritual individual, then why not inform, invite him to a janazah? I've seen people who are not the most religious in the world, but you'll still tell them, listen, tomorrow we're doing my father's janazah. May Allah bless his soul. It's at 10.30 at this cemetery. Please join us. Why Fatima doesn't want them to be at the funeral? Isn't that enough? That when Fatima Zahra is saying, I don't want these to be at the funeral. And Bukhari himself admits Imam Ali did not inform Abu Bakr of the funeral of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. What was it being mentioned here? Imam was making it very clear that for us, this situation indicates our rejection of the government, our rejection of these people. If now Imam Ali has rejected them, I ask in Sunni thought a question. Imam Ali alayhi salam's wife and him have blatantly not pledged allegiance. Do they remain Muslim or no? Of course, what's the argument that comes back? Later he pledged. After she died, he pledged. Six months later, he pledged. Why? Why? Why would he wait to pledge? 
If this man is the most pious man and the leader of the Muslims, why would he wait until he pledges? What's interesting is when the hadith continues. The hadith continues that Imam Ali says, while Fatima was alive, people used to come towards me. When she died, they all left me. Very interesting. In Bukhari, this is not outside so that someone says this is in Shia literature. In Bukhari, he says that while Fatima was alive, People would come towards me. When Fatima died, they began to distance themselves more and more from me. Until Imam Ali says, the Hadith of Bukhari says, he said, call for Abu Bakr, but let him come alone. He didn't want Umar to come. Why not? Why? If you want to call for Abu Bakr, because we believe that when Fatima and Zahra died, that period, there was a sort of coming together of the caliphate with Imam Ali. But in Bukhari, Imam Ali says, only Abu Bakr comes to see me, nobody else. Omar doesn't come. Isn't that enough of an indication that Imam Ali السلام, has a major problem with Omar ibn al-Khattab and a major problem with the actions of Omar. And interestingly, later on, Omar does what he wants to do with Fadak. And later on, even you find the Umayyads themselves finding them with Fedek at their disposal. Everybody minting Fedek except Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Fatima al-Zahra, as Imam Ali says in Nahj al-Balakha, me and Fatima, all that we had was what? Was Fedek. And even that, they took away from us. Therefore, when we come and see the conclusion of all of this, what is it? The conclusion of all of this is that Fatima al-Zahra became the nemesis for that government. A clear nemesis. She is the one who stood up against that government, the one who blatantly wouldn't talk to them. If they say salam, she wouldn't reply to the salam. And I'll tell you something that's amazing. Go and see the ulama of the Sunni world in their explanation of this hadith in Bukhari. Because this hadith in Bukhari, Fatima says, I'm angry with Abu Bakr. I kept away from Abu Bakr. I refuse to talk to him till I die. I get buried without him being in the funeral. How do we explain it? The explanations are unbelievable. I've seen some contradictions in my time in the explanation. But explanations like, you know, Abu Bakr, well, he was right because she doesn't deserve inheritance. But at the same time, she's the daughter of Rasulullah. And at the same time, you've got to understand that, you know, these things and it got a bit emotional. But Imam Ali at the end was okay with everyone. Okay, but I'm, I'm not understanding what's going on here because this lady has ended up dying from all of this. She's received death threats. Her house has been threatened to be burnt. First issue that emerges from this, in the Muslim world today, whenever you see us talk about these sensitive topics, as I've done in the last few nights, you'll always hear people saying, Imam Ali wouldn't have wanted us to talk about these things. Tell you what his wife did. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, you say he wouldn't have wanted the Muslims to talk about these things. His wife certainly caused the clamor. She wouldn't stop. Even while injured, she continued to speak out. She would be the one going from house to house in Medina. Going from house to house. Have you forgotten Ghadir? You've allowed these two, the ones who go around forcing people to pledge. And I haven't even finished with how they force people. Inshallah, tomorrow... We go towards one of their foot soldiers who, if he wants to force somebody, no, he doesn't just force him, he beheads him. You go towards these two and my Imam, my husband, Abel Hassan, all of you neglect him. Now I ask all of you, those of you who say Imam Ali would not want us to talk about these topics. Fatima al-Zahra died talking about these topics. Fatima al-Zahra salam lost her life talking about these topics. But the second issue that emerges from this is what? What's the second issue? If we are able to burn the house of Hussein while his mom's alive, what stops us from killing Hussein after his mom has died? Because you know what principle was set by the attack on Fatima? What was the principle? The principle was that Yazid could turn around and say, hold on a minute, you guys have a problem with me for threatening to kill babies at Karbala, we took her baby out. And if you guys are telling me that I'm wrong for burning tents, well, masters before me who appointed my father, they burned, ten they burned a house in Medina. What happened was that the precedent was set. 
That's if Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abu Bakr are able to anger Fatima, then don't be scared if you anger Hussein. That principle that had been set became a dangerous principle because a person could turn around and use that principle. And that's why what surprises me on the third level is the Shia who doubt this incident. You know, you meet Shia in the Muslim community and you'll see some of them saying, yeah, but you know what? I don't really believe. It's in non-Shia books, number one. In non-Shia books, they're saying, Umar is saying to her, listen, if these guys are going to continue to gather in the house, we're going to burn the house. You tell me, if someone tells you, I'm going to burn your house, is it far-fetched to think that he may actually eventually do it? That's number one. Number two, what's the second issue? They say, well, Imam Ali salam would never allow such a thing to happen. You know, how could he watch his wife being attacked? <laughs> you never said that about the Prophet when Sumayya was being executed, Ammar's mom. Ammar's mother, Sumayya, when she was being executed, all the Prophets said, Sabran, Ali Yasser! Sabran, Ali Yasser! Sabran, Ali Yasser! Patience of family of Yasser! Ya Rasulullah, you're the bravest warrior on earth. Go and defend her. No. Some things are matters which the Prophet takes into his own hands. Imam Ali, in our opinion, stop those who came towards his house, those who had said already that we're going to burn the house, but he made it clear that a will of the Prophet stops me from taking this bloodshed even further. Yes? Third, they say, well, the Arabs would never do that. Which Arabs? The Saqifa Arabs? Thaqif and Hawazin, Mughira bin Shu'ba and others? Many of these already had a hate and a vengeance that they wanted to take out on the holy household. Number four, when you see a man saying, I'm going to threaten to burn the house, isn't that enough for you to realize that that person will actually go ahead what they do? Number five, why a secret burial? If she died naturally, just have a public burial. Number six, why do none of us know where she's buried? Simple reality. If she died a natural death, here, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein, all of us know where they're buried. Why her in particular? Nobody knows. Why? As a symbol against the oppression of that time. Just in case there are some of you who think that I was not oppressed, show me, where's my grave? Can any of us see her grave? Can any of us find her grave? We search in Baqiyah wherever we walk. And for all we know, we may be walking on her grave one day. Imagine that feeling that all of us have, that we don't know if we are on the grave of Fatima or not. So therefore, she was the nemesis against that government. And she, and this is a vital point, if Imam al Hussein alayhi salam showed in his stand that Yazid's government was illegitimate, then his mom done exactly the same thing 50 years before him. Why is Yazid's government illegitimate? Because Hussein bin Ali stood up. Do you agree? The fact that Imam al Hussein says the government's illegitimate, that's enough. If his mom does it 50 years earlier, what's the difference? If his mom agrees with that government, it's a legitimate government. If his mom says no, it's illegitimate. And therefore you found, am I surprised that Hussein bin Ali emerges the way he emerges? No. At the end of the day, if you have a mother like Fatima standing up against the oppression of her time, then you do the same. Question, how did the Umayyads find her? Because she eventually dies, becomes a martyr. If we fast forward the years later, how did the Umayyads find Fatima? Did they see her as glorious? Did the Muslims all see her as glorious? How did the Kufans see her? The Umayyads reached a stage, by the way, where they were cursing Fatima to Zahra in their pulpits. The Abbasids is a different story. In al kafi or Shaykh Al-Kulayni, people are warned, don't praise Ali and Fatima, for there are many haters of Ali and Fatima. The Umayyads had Christian poets who would curse Fatima to Zahra. One may argue that Zayd in his revolution stood up against these poets and stood up against the Umayyads. The Umayyads had those who hated Fatima, who disrespected Fatima. The Kufans had those who loved Fatima and had those who may have not respected Fatima. But on the 10th of Muharram, what do you find? You find that sometimes, subhanallah, you may not be a Shi'i, but if you have that love for Al Muhammad, a seed of that love for Al Muhammad, a seed of love for Zahra, it could come to help you one day in guidance towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone says, how? You look on the 10th of Muharram, when's her name mentioned? 
One of the times her name is mentioned is by her lovers. That young man whose mother is there on the 10th of Muharram. And she is there and she sees all the other mothers have given sons. And you see this young boy next to his mom. And she is like, it's your turn now. You go out and make me proud. And he turned around to his mom. He said, watch me, I'll make you proud. He goes to Abu Abdullah. And he says to him, Ya Abu Abdullah, it's my turn. He said, young man, go and look after your mother. Go and protect your mother. Went back to his mom. His mom said, why have you come back? He said, he said to me, he doesn't want me to go out. He said, you have to protect you. He said, no, on the contrary. You will make me proud today. Go out and tell them who you are. His lines of poetry, until today, they cause us to cry, to break down. Our heart becomes softened, softer because of this young man's poetry. Amir Hussein. Allah. All of you know it. All of you know these lines. But I want you to focus in particular at his description when he gets to Fatima. Amir Hussein wa Ni'mal Amir. Okay? My prince, my master is Hussein. And this is all of us in this hall. All of you watching at home can relate to these lines. Wallah, I think all of us wish we could have said these lines. Amir Hussein wa Ni'mal Amir. Sururu Fuad al Bashir Nadir. علي وفاطمة والدا فهل تعلمون له من نظير علي is my حسين is my prince and the most blessed prince the one who brought happiness to the one who guided and reminded علي and فاطمة are his parents have you found an equal to come near him Allah young man but that shi'ar that he gave, every Shia on earth lives by it. That we all wish we were in Karbala tonight. And if we were holding that dariq, we'd say, Amir Hussein wa Ni'mal Amir, Surur Fuad al Bashir al Nadir, Ali wa Fatima walida, Fahal Ta'lamun lahu min Nadir. That man, that young man, highlighted his love for Fatima al Zahra. Then there was another one. <sighs> this other one. <sighs> Believe you me, this other one, his love for Fatima saved him. All of us, Ya Allah, we love Fatima. But his love for Fatima, at which moment? Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi. Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi was commander of the opposition commander of the opposition when he encounters Imam al Hussein, even at Salah time he says Abba Abdullah you have to lead us even though he's the leader of the opposition he says you are here how can I lead Salah so when does his love of Fatima show he blocks Imam al Hussein from going to Kufa he says I will not let you go Imam al Hussein says something to him thakalatka <laughs> ummu Thakalatka ummuk is like when someone has literally attacked your mom. May your mom have never given birth to you. The reply of Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi highlights to all of you Wallah, if you have a love for Fatima, Wallah, you will be saved on the day of judgment. And Wallah, if you show hate to Fatima, then on that day, may Allah save you. He looked at Hur, he said to him, Thakalatka ummuk, you block me from Kufa, may your mother have never given birth to you. What does Hur reply? <laughs> if you were the son of any other lady, if you were the son of any other lady, then I would attack you. But your mother is Fatima. <laughs> How can I say anything to you? Abba Abdullah, you can imagine. I, I, I've never seen this narrated in traditions. I'm saying this from myself. You can imagine because of the politeness of Hurm bin Yazid al Riyahi at that moment. Where anybody else had you attacked his mom, he would have attacked your mom. Because Hur said, I cannot, your mom is Fatima. I believe maybe Abba Abdullah prayed and said, Guide him guide him because he has a respect for my mother 
And how close was Imam Al Hussein to his mother? <sighs> and that's why the morning of the 10th of Muharram came. And Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi is on the side of Umar bin Sa'ad. But one of the soldiers said, I looked at Hur. And you know, people were counting that you know what? If Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi is at the front, no one loses war. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. He said, I looked at Hur. And when I looked at him, I thought to myself that if they told me who's the bravest soldier in the whole of Kufa, I'd say Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi. But I look at him and he looks confused. So I came towards him, I said, Hur, what's wrong with you? If they ask me who's the bravest of the warriors, <laughs> then I'd say it's Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi. What's wrong? You seem confused. Hur bin Yazid al Riyahi looked towards the man and he mentioned what? He mentioned the two things <laughs> affected him at that moment. What were they? I give this to all of you now. Uh, the first of them was that last night I heard the children of Fatima al Zahra calling out Al Atash, Al Atash, Al Atash. Last night I heard the daughters of Rasulullah calling out Al-Atash, Al-Atash, Al-Atash. I could hear the thirst of the children of Abba Abdullah. That was the first one. What was the second thing that affected him? Shimmer bin Dil Joshan that day had said, put water on the hooves of the horses. The horses are feeling the heat of Karbala. Get them some water. You care about the horses. How about the family of Rasulullah? At that moment, Hurm bin Yazid al Riyah, he thought to himself, I have to make a decision between heaven and hell. I have to make a decision between heaven and hell. At that moment, he walked towards Abba Abdullah with his head bowed down, knowing that he had blocked the water from the children. When he got to Imam Al Hussein, Abba Al Fadl Al Abbas, he came out to him because he thought maybe an attack could come. Imam Al Hussein said, No, no, wait. Abbas, maybe he has something to say to us. Remember, Abba Abdullah, a few days earlier, he had known very well that this Hur had already said to him, I respect your mother Fatima. So he knew there was the seeds of change. So he came to him with his head bowed down. When he came to him and his head was bowed down, what did he say to him? He said to him, Abba Abdullah, forgive me, forgive me for blocking. Allow me to come back. Imam al Hussein look at the softness of his heart he said to him Hur don't worry I forgive you the next thing that Hur said breaks everyone's heart where's Zainab alayhi salam why because it's as if he knew what would happen to Zainab maybe because of his decision he walked towards Zainab alayhi salam and he said to her forgive me O granddaughter of Rasulullah Allah. Say the Zainab alayhi salam said, no, of course we forgive you. Do not worry. Uh, he turned around. His son Bukhar was with him. He went towards Imam al Hussein. He said to him, Abba Abdullah, considering I'm the one who blocked you, then I should be the first to be to martyred alongside you. Uh, allow me to be the first. Uh, Imam al Hussein said, no, no, hold, leave it. Uh, he said, no, I will be the first. Let me go, Abba Abdullah. Uh, imagine him walking towards the battlefield he looked towards their soldiers and he said inni ana al hur wa ma'wa al dhayf adribukum fi a'naqikum bis sayf an khayr man halla bilad al khayf adribukum wa la ara min khayf he fought valiantly one by one until he fell on the ground and he called out maybe for the first First time in his life, Assalamu alayka ya Abba Abdullah. Imam al Hussein came running towards him. They sat and both of them began to look at each other. Imam looked at him. He forgot that the man blocked the water from his children.
heaven. He forgot that the man could be the reason for his death. Look at the humbleness of Abba Abdullah. He looked towards Hur and he said to him, You are free, Hur, like your mother named you. Free in this world and free in the hereafter. لَنِعْمَلْ حُرْ حُرُّ بَنِي رِيَاحِ صَبُورٌ عند مشتبك الرماح لنعمل حر إثفاد حسينا وجاد بنفسه عند الصباح I'll leave you all with this line now I don't know if my grandmother Fatima is in the crowd with us tonight she may be be careful if you move your hand you might touch a broken rib she may be next to you it could be next to any one of you I don't know if she's here in the crowd she might be she might not be but one thing I want to speak to her as her grandson. <laughs> I want to say one thing to her. When you lost your rib in Medina, did you expect more ribs to break in Karma? When you lost your rib in Medina, did you expect more ribs to break in Karbala? When you lost your muhsin behind the door, did you expect to see Azhar on the floor? Allahu Akbar! When you lost your muhsin behind the door, did you expect to see the Radhi on the floor? When you were slapped behind the door, did you expect to see Zainab slept on the floor? When you were slept behind the door, did you expect to see Zainab on the floor? One more thing I want to ask you, grandmother. When you saw the fires around the house, did you see Sukaina running from the fires around her in Karbala? A Fatimo, all of you. A Fatimo, low khilit al Hussein, mujaddala. Waqad mata ad shanad bishat farat. Ida la la tamt al khad. Fatima andahu. Let's all raise our hands. All of us together in dua. Ya Allah, raise us with Muhammad and Al Muhammad. Raise us with the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib Al Asri was Zaman. Allow us to be amongst his companions and his followers. Ya Allah, allow us to see the glorious grave of Fatima al Zahra. Alayhi salam. Ya Allah, allow us to restore Jannat al Baqi. Allow us to restore the graves of Ahmed Al Muhammad. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Surah Al Fatiha. But before it, wherever you may be, the loudest of your salawat. The Sayyid mentioned the mothers of Karbala. There is one more mother who gave all, all that she had in the way of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, and that woman is Umm Al Banin alayhi salam. The door to our hawaij, the door to our needs. Umm al Banin, who fed the love of Imam al Hussein to her son Zabil Fadl al Abbas and to all of her sons so that they can show on the day of Ashura what sons they were and make her mother proud and make their mother proud, Umm al Banin, so that she can stand side by side with Fatima al Zahra. I saw Umm al Banin. I saw Umm al-Bani walking and she kneels beside each son. She tells them all of her promise and she tells them one by one. I saw Umm and she kneels beside each son. She tells them all of her promises, and she tells them one by one. 
they shine within her eyes like stars it's only a few hours to tell them who she chose them for and give the stars to Ali son and give the stars to Ali son she comes to Abbas and tells him She comes to Abbas and tells him I gave you hands to Muhammad So that on the day of judgment he can wipe the tears Hussein shed I raised you to be a mountain So you got Muhammad children And you revive his religion He's not here to break the idols So Abbas, you break them in step So Abbas, you break them in step Oh Abdallah, do not be scared if your eyes see calamity Oh, Abdallah, do not be scared If your eyes see calamity When you see thousands in battle Take your sword and cry, oh Ali Take your sword and cry, oh Ali Whenever I had trials Crying his name brought miracles Cry out for Ali in battle Ali is the Lion of God And you are from his family And you, and you are from his family said to Ja'far Umm al-Bainin said to Ja'far You remind me of Al-Hasan He is the son of Muhammad and and you are of Ali's children Keep Hassan's memory in you When against thousands you are a few Why? He didn't have seventy two and when you drink from the arrows Remember he drank poison Remember, remember when he drank poison Uthman, remember your cradle Uthman, remember your cradle I would sing to you a sweet name This was 
Hussein, it's your duty to keep alive your brother's flame, to keep alive your brother's flame. I do not want you to return when to ward the battle you turn the arrows and your death yearn. even if you are all my sons even if you are all my sons my favorite son Hussein became my favorite son Hussein Let me hear your voices my favorite son Hussein Allah of mine remember your cradle I would sing to you a sweet this was Hussein, it's your duty to keep alive your brother's name, to keep alive, to keep alive your brother's flame. I do not want you to return. When to ward the battle you turn The arrows and your death yearn. Even if you are all my sons My favorite son Hussein became my friend My favorite son Hussein became Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al arwah alati hallak bi finaik alaykum minni jami'an salamullah badan ma baqit wa baqiya al layl wa al nahar wa la ja'alahu Allah akhir al ahdi minni ila ziyaratikum Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala awlad al Hussein wa ala ashab al Hussein khususan sayyidi wa maulai abil fadl al Abbas waqtahu Zainab jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh many thanks to the poet Nuri Sardar for the poem wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ila arwah al mu'minin wa al mu'minat رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات Shrines plan to expand. We at Imam Hussein Media Group have secured and built a new building to help continue our efforts for Abba Abdullah. The 13 story building will be harboring all five channels at Imam Hussein Media Group, as well as space for filming studios, editing suites, server rooms, and a Husseinia for the locals. Imam Hussein Media Group is giving all you viewers a chance to help and be a part of this venture we are embarking on. Same TV to build, plaster, and paint one square meter of the building. Your donations will forever grant you reward and help you in your akhira. For every show and program that is made and broadcasted, you will earn a share in its thawab. So please help 
and donate whatever you can. Remember, you are helping pave the way for millions to Karbala and to Imam Hussein.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, my dear respected brothers and sisters and dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV. And welcome to this night, the fourth night that we're here commemorating the month, the holy month of Muharram. And inshallah, tonight we'll be taking in your calls as per usual and taking in your names and putting them on the flag of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. My dear brothers and sisters, if you do want to call in to the live show, you can call us on plus four four. Eight double zero two seven zero zero one double nine. Alternatively, you can WhatsApp us your names, and inshallah, they'll be passed on to us here in the studio on plus four four seven nine three nine nine one seven one six three. And inshallah, we'll be at your service tonight. We are commemorating the night of the one who switched sides in the very last second and was choosing between heaven and hell, and that is none other than Al-Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi. But before we do that, as per usual, we'll let our co-host introduce himself, insha'Allah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters and respected viewers, wherever you may be. Alhamdulillah, as you know, tonight is Thursday night, Laylatul Jum'ah. And it's so special, and everybody wants to be a Zahir of Imam Hussein at this night. Even the Malaika, the prophets, all they get in, stay on the queue to come and visit Abu Abdullah al Hussein, recite the Ziyarah. As Sayyid Fatima al Zahra tonight is here on the shrine of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. So pick up your phone, dial the number. Plus 964-774-067-1837 and be a Zahir of Imam Hussein and have your name written on the special and blasted flag, flag of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein, inshallah. Ahsan, Brother Ali, and you, you can see that the flag is slowly getting full. More and more full the flag is getting with the names of you, your names, your family's names, your marhumin's names. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a lot of projects here going on at Imam Hussein TV that we're focusing on very much for you, not for us, for you, for you, the dear viewer who can't make it to Karbala, for the dear viewers who feel like they can't have a business here in Karbala that can't you know, bring them ajr and thawab and helping the poor, helping the people around the world. Here in Karbala, we have a special project that is the Imam Hussein TV studios that we're building currently right now. You can get one square meter in your name or your marhum's name or your family's name. And that will be a sadaqa jariya for you. Whatever we broadcast, whatever documentary we make, whatever live feed comes out of this whatever tear drops as a result of that will come straight to your marhumin and yourself because we know when we leave this earth there is only two things that stand for us our a'mal and the sadaqa jari those are the two things that will remain with us in the grave not the millions of pounds that we have or the millions of dollars that we have not all these buildings and that touch the skyline and all these businesses those two, our a'mal and the sadaqa jariya. Now your marhumin may not have a sadaqa jariya. This is your opportunity right now to have a sadaqa jariya in their name. And inshallah, we will accept the first za'ar of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in tonight's show with a big assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah from the holy land of Karbala. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. My dear brother, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. My dear brother, your name and where you're calling from? Yeah, I'm, I'm calling from Slough, Berkshire. 
Slough, mashallah, UK. I'm very familiar with Slough, yes. And your name? My name is Maruk. Sorry, what was that, Maruk? Maruk, 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 just like Shahruk. Shahruk? I, I didn't Maruch. hear that, brother. Can you repeat that, please? It's Maruk, Maruk. Maruk. I think it's Maruk, like Shahruk. Aha, aha, mashallah, my dear brother. My brother, can I ask you, have you been to Karbala before? Uh, I haven't. I've been to Iran. Been to Iran. I've been there for two and a half years. Yes. In 85 to 87. Wow, but not mashallah, Karbala. a long time ago. Long time ago. My yes. dear brother, all we can do is pray for you from heaven on earth here in Karbala, the most beautiful place in Karbala. You know, a piece of exactly. heaven this is exactly. from the heavens above and inshallah you can have your voice sound here in Karbala inshallah so I will not take up too much of your time but the shrine of Imam al Hussein in front of you my dear brother have your ziyar okay can I can I have my sis name put on the flag please not my name but my sister because she's unwell yes what's your sister's name my dear brother her name is Sahira Mahdi Samira Mahdi Sagira, Sagira. Sagira. Yeah, Sagira Shah. Sagira Shah. Inshallah, we'll put Sagira Shah on the flag of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam right now. My dear brother, the two holy shrines of Imam Al Hussein and Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas are on your screen now. So go ahead and perform your ziyara on behalf of your sister. Jazakallah, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum ya ibn Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum ya ibn Amir al Mu'minin al Sayyid al Wasiyyin. Assalamu alaikum ya ibn Fatima al Zahra ibn Sayyid al Nisa al Arameen. Assalamu alaikum wa ala Ali ibn al Husayn wa ala Ali al Husayn. My dear brothers, as you can see, uh, we just have your sister name written on the flag of Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. And may Allah grant you health and wealth. Jazakumullah khaira. Do we have another caller on the line? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sister Mahdiya. Yes, it is. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing tonight, inshaAllah? Oh, well? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Now, tonight is the night of Al-Hur ibn Yazid, Al-Riyahi, Sister Mahdiya. What do you know about Hur? Well, I know that um, he, um, he was, like, bad at first, but he um, realized his his mistakes and everything he was doing that he went to um imam say begged to him like would he forgive him because because he felt like he was doing such a sin and Masha. then Masha. and then allah forgives him masha masha allah masha allah masha allah, masha allah. Masha allah. Masha allah. Masha I sent him Sister Mahdiya. Now, Sister Mahdiya, you're going to have to excuse us for a moment here because we can't, we, as much as we would love to have more conversation with you, we're going to take you straight to the ziyarah, inshallah, of Imam Al Hussein, alayhi salam. So, bismillah. Sister Mahdiya, are you with me? Uh, yes, yes, we're still here. Bismillah. Recite your ziyarah. Bismillah. 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 Assalamu alaikum ya kamar bani hashim assalamu alaikum ya sakina assalamu alaikum ya sayyid al kubra 
Allah <laughs> then let them look at Sister Mahdiya and take her as an example. Inshallah, we will take the next za'ar of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahma wa ikram. Dear sister, your full name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Zainab Abdi. I'm calling from Canada. Sister Zainab from Canada. Inshallah, the night of Hur ibn Yazid al riyahi Inshallah, we learn from it and you learn from it. How does it feel not being able to be here in Karbala today? It's feeling terrible. I I just performed uh, a ziyara to Imam Hussein without knowing that I can actually say salam live. Mm -hmm. I'm at work right now, but I can actually see it on YouTube. So that's a blessing. Imam actually, he gave me blessing to, you know, say salam to him. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, sister. Sister Zainab, we're going to take you straight to the shrine of the master of martyrs, the master of freedom, the master of justice, Abi Abdullah al Hussein, alayhi salam. So, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, ya Abna Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum, ya Abna Amir al Mu'minin, wa Abna Sayyid al Fasin. Assalamu alaikum ya abna Fatima al-Zahra ya Sayyida an-Nisa al-Alamin Assalamu alaikum ya Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas ya Sayyidi ya Maula ya abna Amir al-Mu'minin Assalamu alaikum jumla shahidan badasht Karbala wa siran Karbala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Jazakallah Sir Zainab Abedi, Ahsentum Jazakumullah Khair, as you see, I have your name written on the flag of Aba Abdullah Al Hussein. This looks like the line. Did you get cut off, sister, or are you still with us? We have another caller on the line. Sorry, sorry about that, sister. If you just text us in, and inshallah, we'll have the name written down. But we'll take the next caller, the next za'ir of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Salamu alaykum. Hello. Salamu alaykum. Hello. Wa alaykum as salam. Alhamdulillah. Can you hear me very well? Yes, definitely. Alhamdulillah. Sister, your name and where you're calling from, please. Brother, I am Sayyida Sada Fatima. I'm calling from Bangladesh, Dhaka. Sayyida Sada Fatima. Sayyida Sada Fatima, yes. From Bangladesh. MashaAllah, the Shia of Bangladesh. It's an yeah. honor to speak to you, my dear sister. Thank you so much. How is the preparation for Muharram in Bangladesh right now? It's going really quite well because we have several majlis are happening here but alhamdulillah on other hand because of you guys we are able to watch karbala live majlis and hearing uh, sayyid aman nakshwani sir's recitations how he gave us lectures and everything it's amazing it's remarkable his words and everything and every program steps by steps Alhamdulillah, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll both agree that Sayyid Ammar is a gem to the channel, a gem to the Shia community at large. But my dear sister, Sayyida Sadef, we won't take up too much of your time because we have a queue of callers waiting. So inshallah, the shrine of yeah. Imam Hussein alayhi salam will appear in front of you. Have your ziyarah. Definitely. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa jil farajahum Assalamu alayka ya Babadullah Assalamu alayka ya Abna Rasulullah Assalamu alayka ya Abna Khadijatul Qubram al Mu'minin Assalamu alayka ya Abna Fatima al Zahrai Sayyidat al Nisa al Alameen Assalamu alayka ya Ali ibn Hassan al Mujtaba Assalamu alayka ya Sayyid al Shabab ahli Jannah 
السلام عليكم يا حسين مظلوم شهيد بكربلا ناو ليتس اول توجذر ريسايت السلام على الحسين عليه السلام وعلى علي ابن الحسين عليه السلام وعلى اولاد الحسين عليه السلام ولا اصحاب الحسين عليه السلام السلام عليك يا سقى السكينه يا ابا الفضل العباس يا خاشف الخرب وجه الحسين عليه السلام اكشف كرب بكيك الحسين عليه السلام السلام عليك يا زين العابدين يا سجر الساجدين يا ابن السيد الشهداء السلام عليك يا سيران كربلاء وسيران جزاكم الله خير جزاكم الله خير ثانك يو سو ماتش Thank you for your call. I'm just going to have to cut you here because there's so many people in the queue waiting to just have that ziyara. Jazakum Allah khair al jaza. Thank you. Thank you so much for your call. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah, people, could, she, she could have gone for, mashallah. Yeah, yes, we have yes. another caller on the line. Salaamu alaikum. Hello. Mashallah. My dear brother, your full name and where you're calling from. Hello, my dear sister, I think, yeah? It was a sister. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May I have your name and where you're calling from? Name is Anissa Shah. Anissa Shah, yes? Anissa Shah? Yes. Romisa with the R. Okay, and where are you calling from? London. From London, mashallah, mashallah. Sister, how your ziyara? Speak to Abu Abdullah Al Hussein and ask your hajat from Imam Hussein. I would like to read Ayat Al Kursi, please. Yeah, Sorry? go ahead. Recite the Ayat Al Kursi, Surat Al Ayat Al Kursi. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. why not? Bismillah. 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 لا تأكله سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ما عند الذي يشفى عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يهيد ولا شيء من المهي إلا بما شاء وفي كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده شفت أما Ahsantum, mashallah, mashallah. Thank you so much for that beautiful recitation of the holy words of the Quran. Mashallah, thank you so much. And what better way to do a ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein as he tried to protect the Quran on the day of Ashura, on the day where the Quran was nearly finished, but Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam saved it. Do we have another caller on the line? Salamu alaikum. Walaikum salam. MashaAllah, my dear brother, your full name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Mehdi and I'm calling from Kuwait. MashaAllah, brother Mehdi from Kuwait. How is the establishment of Majalis in Kuwait? InshaAllah, they're going well. InshaAllah, InshaAllah. InshaAllah, we will be in honor of InshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, uh, we pray for you. We pray, inshallah. we pray inshallah. that you make it to Arba'in. That walk that Sayyidah Zainab endured. My dear brother, dear brother Mehdi from Kuwait, we will give you the opportunity to perform the ziyara right now, insha'Allah. So the shrine of Imam al Hussein is in front of you right now. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abu Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum, Ibn, Ibn Ali. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Ya Fatima to Zahra Ali Salaam. Assalamu alaikum ya Shodai Karbala. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum ya Shodai Karbala. Assalamu alaikum. Ahsantum. Jazakumullah khaira. May Allah grant you the ziyarat of Imam Hussein and his brother Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas inshallah on the Arba'een. Thank you for your call. Ahsantum. Ahsantum my dear brother. Jazakumullah khair. And uh, inshallah, we will take the next za'ar of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. Salamu alaikum. Hello. We die. We have a property. We have a house. We yeah. have a kids. We have a 
money, you know, account, uh, diamond, gold. But after we die, what we can take with us? Two things. Just Your amal and the sadaqa jariya. So, amal and sadaqa jariya, my dear brothers and sisters, that's all you can take, brother Ali. That's all. The ziyarat of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and be a good server of Imam Hussein. The amal helping the I think, Imam Hussein and Ahl al I think there's a caller right now on the line. Sorry, brother Ali, for cutting you off there. Do we have the caller on the line? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, dear sister. You, can I have your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling from U.S. From where? My US. name is Rabab. My name is Rabab. Rabab from U.S. Is that correct? Yes, Rabab from U.S. Rabab from and U.S. And my my kid. Yeah, and my kid want to talk to you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, um, Brother Ali has better hearing than me. I didn't hear that properly. Salamu alaikum. Salamu alaikum. Hello? She is three years old. Oh, mashallah. Mashallah. What's her name? Her name is Salha. Her name is? Salha. 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 MashaAllah, MashaAllah. We're going to give you the opportunity to perform the ziyarah of Imam Al Hussein right now. We're going to put the shrines in front of you. So, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, begin. MashaAllah, three years old. Ya Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah. 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 Better than most of us can. At the age of three, the love of Hussein flows through her veins. At the age of three, she's not thinking toys. She's thinking Aba Abdullah. I'm truly humbled by Sister Saleh. And we're gonna put her name and her mother's name, Saleh and Rabab, on the flag of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, and we'll take the next caller on the line. Salamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Salam, can, can you hear me? I can hear you very well, sister. Can you hear us? Salam. Uh, uh, well, oh my goodness, I'm so. Um, uh, assalamu alaikum, my brother. Alaykum my name is Malishi, and I'm calling from Canada. Your name? And. Uh, sister Malishi. Malishi, Malishi. Yes, I'm calling from Canada, and I know that tonight is the night of. Uh, uh, Hood, and I just want to say that inshallah this Arabian will be my first ever ziyara yeah, and Allah. because inshallah. I am actually <laughs> I although I was born a Shia I left the faith and then I came back two years ago and your channel Alhamdulillah you folks have helped me so much and I just want to say that just like Janabi Hood I was guided by by God through Imam Hussain alayhi salam so thank you so very much for all that you folks do for people and uh, just thank you so very much I can feel the emotion in your voice sister and inshallah that emotion is towards Imam al Hussain alayhi salam so we're going to put the shrine in front of you right now so that you can perform the ziyarah of Imam al Hussain and inshallah in person during Arba'een. So the shrine is going to be put in front of you. Bismillah. Thank you very much. Just please uh, let me know whenever I can start. You can start now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Rasulullah. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Ibn Sayyid al-Wakiyyid. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Fatima al-Zahra'i. Sister Maliha from Canada, 
We appreciate your call. We thank you for your call. You've obtained in your lifetime. And inshallah, the only visa you will need is the visa of Karbala, which is the permission from Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam to enter Karbala. And I think we have another caller on the line. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Sister, can I have your full name and where you're calling from? Hanara Shah. So can I please spell that out? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Uh, can I please spell it out? I, I couldn't hear that. Could you repeat that? Can I please spell out my name? Yes, yes. yes go yes. ahead. Go ahead, sister. Yes. H. H. U. M. M. N for November. N. Yeah. A I. A I. R A. Honeira. Honeira Shah. Honeira Shah, yeah. Honeira Shah. Shah. Brother Ali is, uh, mashallah, familiar with you. I believe you have called in before. Mashallah to you. So, my dear sister. Well, I, that was, um, I didn't call in before. Yeah, it's her first time, so alhamdulillah that she can be a Zaira of Imam Hussein mm -hmm. tonight on Layla Tijan and on Thursday night. Sister, how your Ziyara speak to Imam Hussein? Thank you. Bismillah. Allahumma salivaliyaka al hujjad ibn al Hassan salawatika alayhi wa ala abai fi hazi his ta'at wa fi kulli his ta'at Waliyan wa hafiza wa ka'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna Hatta duskanahu arzaka tawwa wa tamatiyahu fi hatu ila Rahmatika ya arham arahimin Ahsantum, Jazakumullah khair Inshallah by having your name on the flag of Imam Hussain Inshallah we will ask Imam Hussain to grant you the ziyarat of Imam Hussain Inshallah on the Arba'een. Ahsantum, Ahsantum, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And uh, I, I believe we have another caller on the line. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. My name is Hassan Abbas Rizvi. Hassan Abbas Rizvi, where are you calling from, my dear brother? I am calling from Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, I believe? Yes. My geography is still on top. Yeah. Geography is still on top. MashaAllah, brother Hassan Abbas Rizvi, inshallah, the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam will be put in front of you. Have your ziyarah. Cry towards Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Tell him how you feel that you can't be here in Karbala. Bismillah. Bismillah rahman rahim. Inshallah, we are going to, uh, to see Imam Hussein in December. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abba Abdullah, Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein. Ya Hussein. Labbaik, Ya Hussein. Labbaik, Ya Hussein. We echo those words, my dear brother Hassan Abbas Rizvi. Thank you so much for your call, my dear brother. Inshallah, we'll accept the next za'ar after you. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. MashaAllah. My dear sister, can I have your name and where you're calling from, please? Yeah, my name is Kitfa. Kitfa Ali Shah, and I'm calling from Langley. Kisra Ali Shah? Yeah. Mashallah. But um, instead of my name, can I, instead of my name, can I please get my mother's name written on the flag, of, and my little cousin? Of course. Of what was course. her name? Her name is Asia. A double S I A. Asia. Yeah. Sister. Nargis. N A R G I S. Asia Nargis will be put on the flag right now, my dear sister, and inshallah you can perform a ziyara on behalf of her and yourself in just sorry just before that can i also put my little cousin's name he has not been well since birth and yes. it's also his birthday today he turned 18 today so inshallah um inshallah. i hope everyone can make the art that he gets what's, better soon what's his name his name is muzahir haider mutahir haider muzahir haider 
مظاهر حيدر مظاهر حيدر سيستر هاف يور زيارة بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوسيم السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة المسالمين السلام عليك يا سار الله والوسر المنصور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي هلت بثنائك عليكم جميعا السلام عليها بجن ما تقيمي وبسي الليل وقتها السلام عليكم الله علي بن الحسين وأولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين أحسنتم جزاكم الله خيرا May Allah grant your حوائج and we by writing your name your mother's name inshallah Allah and Abu Abdullah Al Hussein and his brother Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas grant you the ziyarat of Imam Hussein. Jazakum Allah khaira. Look like we have another caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Looks like the line has been cut. Yeah. Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Maisam Raza. Maisam? Yeah, Maisam Raza. Maisam Raza. Yeah. Brother Maisam, where are you calling from? Uh, from United States. From the United Maryland. States. MashaAllah. Maryland in the United States. MashaAllah, my dear brother. Uh, inshallah, we're going to put the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in front of you as there's a long queue waiting to yeah. call. So, can inshallah. You write, can you write my father's name on uh, the flag? Yes. Your father's name. So, Maisam no. Raza and your father's name was? Ali Rasul. Ali Rasul. Ali Rasul. Ali, Ali Rasul. Ali Rasul. Ali Rasul. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Rasool. Inshallah. My dear brother, the shrine of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam is in front of you. Perform your ziyara. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum ya Abdullah. Wala arwahi lati. Allah wa fanaay kalaike minni. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> will grab your hand on the judgment day. Thank you for your call. Jazakum Inshallah. Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, please call us on the number down below. If you want to WhatsApp us, then WhatsApp message only. But call us on the numbers down below, plus four four eight zero zero two seven zero zero one double nine. It's free of charge. It won't charge you anything, but call us so that we can hear your voice clearly in the studio without having to worry about internet connections, or anything other than that. We will take your call straight and we will transfer it to the studio. The team behind the scenes are working tirelessly and working very, very hard to ensure your voices are as clear as possible here in Karbala so that your ziyara can be comfortable for you, so that it can be easy for you to perform without us having to repeat anything that you may say in the phone call. Yes. Do we have another caller? Assalamu alaikum. We don't have uh, a caller, I believe. The lines did get disconnected. But dear brother yes. Ali, right now in the night of Al Harab Nayazid al Riyahi, where he had so much, he had so much in Medina, he had so much in Kufa, he had so much support from the tyrants that killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. They said to him, you're the bravest. He had so much money, but he left everything else. He left everything because he realized that none of this is staying. None of this is permanent. None, everything is temporary. He just stay on that time, at, on that moment. 
and he was thinking what he had, what, where he been, and what's going to happen to him after the battle of Ashura, what's going to happen, and what he realized on the judgment day when he saw the Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, what he going to say to her? But number Did one, I kill? and he just realized, oh my God, it doesn't worth to be with the Yazid. It doesn't worth money or anything because he's not going to take any money with him, anything from Yazid or anything like that. Only Abu Abdullah Al Hussein and Sayyid Fatima Al Zahra will help him. And one of the things that he said and thought was that this life is temporary. Inni ukhayyiru nafsi bayna al jannati wal nar wa la akhtaru ala al jannati shay'a. Yazid is hell, Hussein is heaven. He didn't think about his worldly money, desires, no. Aba Abdullah. And that's our mission. To be like the Hur that stood on the tenth of Muharram and never once, didn't once, after going towards Imam Al Hussein, look back. Instead, he turned around and he fought against the same army that he led because the worldly desires didn't interest him at all. What he thought of was the Sadaqa Jariyah that he was going to leave behind, which was what? The Sadaqa Jariyah was for people to understand that it's never too late to change. For people to understand that it's never too late to be on the right path. And that's what we're trying to get across to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we'll take the next caller on the line. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. My name is Ali Akbar. Can you hear me? Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Brother Ali Akbar, MashaAllah. My brother, where are you calling from? I am calling from California and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, you all are doing an amazing thing there. And uh, thank you so much. I just wanted to remind everybody about donations as well, which I've done. So I wanted to write my mother's name, if I can spell that out. Inshallah, yeah, yes. Bismillah. Her uh, name is spelled Mehra, M E H R A, Hasta, H A. Which is. But from me, my brother Ali.